Blizzard recently announced Diablo Immortal, a free-to-play mobile MMO in the Diablo universe, and much to Blizzard's apparent surprise, Diablo fans are none too happy, including myself. I have a sword. In the wake of recent controversy surrounding this announcement, I couldn't help but be inspired to take a step back and look at the reasons for all the negativity surrounding it, as well as the general negativity that gamers feel toward mobile games when it comes to their favorite console or PC franchises. So sit down, strap in, and follow along with me as we take a look at what happens when good games go mobile. Whether it's a AAA franchise like Pokemon, Mario, or Diablo, or something more niche like Katamari or JRPGs, anytime a beloved established video game franchise suddenly has the word mobile waved around anywhere near the vicinity of it, reception is quite often a mixed bag, with the majority of the mix leaning toward the negative. Diablo Immortal is hardly the first mobile game from a AAA franchise to be met with negative backlash, but the question is, why? I mean, we all have phones, right guys? Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones, phone, right? Now, we've seen some relatively fun mobile games out there from AAA franchises. Fallout Shelter was a nice diversion for a while and I believe still has a player base. Hitman Go and Lorecroft Go are well-received successes, although I heard Deus Ex Go is not all that good compared to those two. And Nintendo always seems to do pretty well with their games so far with Fire Emblem Heroes, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, Super Mario Run, and the behemoth that is Pokemon Go, all still seeing play today. But then we have the other side of the coin. Yes, for every successful case of merging AAA with mobile, there are about a dozen digitally downloadable dumpster fires. It's one thing to take huge franchises with regular releases like Mario and Sonic, throw them onto a smartphone as a fun, simple distraction, but take something a little more niche like Star Ocean or Katamari or the Tales of series. Franchises that definitely aren't dead by any means, but they don't see the attention or the regular releases that some of these other franchises do. Then put them into a very mediocre mobile gotcha game where the main point is to unlock PNGs of your favorite characters, like everyone's favorite Fire Emblem hero. You know the one. Him. It's then a bit easier to see why fans of those particular franchises who are more eager for an announcement of the next game in their favorite series might have a little more justification for their anger when a game company's like, yo, we're bringing out a new game. Download it for free on your phones, y'all. We are gonna have... Sorry. <laughs> I think a lot of the negativity stems from those people being afraid that a new mobile game means there's not going to be a new main series game, at least for maybe a lot longer than they were anticipating. There was some pretty recent backlash when EA of all companies announced Command & Conquer Rivals. Fans of the classic real-time strategy series haven't seen a true Command & Conquer RTS since 2010. Here we are eight years later and EA has the audacity to enthusiastically announce a free-to-play mobile game. The same EA who released a Dungeon Keeper game on smartphones in 2014 that was so riddled with slowed progression that could be sped up through spending real money on microtransactions that it didn't take long before you pretty much had to pay a ton of money to continue playing the game at all. That or just wait hours or days before you could even do anything. People who like Dungeon Keeper didn't say, you know what my favorite part of that game is? Waiting for stuff. So on that similar note, how could you blame Diablo fans for at the very least being very cautious of a free-to-play Diablo game? A game already heavy with a reliance on unlocking loot, which happens to be published by Activision Blizzard. The same Activision Blizzard who launched Black Ops 4 with no microtransactions after getting a ton of positive reviews, mostly in part thanks to its admittedly really fun battle royale mode blackout and then suddenly a couple weeks after release we're like hey guys we got microtransactions now when you see how heavily AAA publishers rely on microtransactions in their own fully-fledged $60 games, let alone free-to-play mobile games, it's really hard to not be concerned of just how this game is going to work once it is released. Now, to be totally fair, we don't yet know how items and loot in Immortal are going to work. Even Blizzard doesn't know yet. It's easy to assume the worst, but until we know, we don't know. But, okay. Let's say this isn't about money. Let's say Diablo Immortal is released, the loot system is completely balanced and fair, and money is strictly for cosmetics. Is it even gonna be any good? 
I mean, a lot of mobile games these days are already crappy Diablo clones anyway, if my previous video on mobile games is anything to go by. But combine that with the fact that this also looks like just any generic mobile Diablo clone, it's hard to remain optimistic. And then you have entirely new and original AAA mobile games like the Deus Ex mobile game that no one liked, or the Mass Effect mobile game that no one liked, or that weird Final Fantasy XV mobile city builder strategy game. Yeah. Or it could be something like a bad mobile port. There's plenty of those looking at you, Square Enix. I think there are two factors at play that add on to what would already have been poorly received here with Diablo Immortal. For one, they announced it at BlizzCon, which is, you know, the con of Blizz. The event that Blizzard fans look forward to every year for the biggest events and news surrounding Blizzard and all their games. And most of these games are still predominantly PC games which are games played on PCs, by PC gamers. I mean, it's not like PC gamers are known for being elitists who look down on any other gaming platforms or anything. No. <laughs> it would be one thing to announce Immortal as a small diversion at E3 or something, but to come out on stage at BlizzCon and build it up the way they did, and to show this whole cinematic CGI trailer, I mean, someone made that. They hired animators, voice actors, musicians, all to make that announcement trailer, only for them to be like, it's a mobile game, guys. Of course this was going to receive backlash. There has to be no way this was unexpected, which to me just further reinforces the idea that they're going to want to push this thing hard because of the fact that it's going to make them a bunch of money through microtransactions. But anyway. Factor number two is that this didn't lead up to a Diablo 4 announcement. All this hype for a mobile game and nothing else. At least when Bethesda announced the Elder Scrolls Blades at E3, they ended things with a teaser for the Elder Scrolls 6. Just an overhead shot of some mountains with a non-final title plastered on the screen and people, myself included, went nuts. In a good way. And it ended things on a high note, leaving hope on the horizon for Elder Scrolls fans. Now I realize that just because Diablo Immortal is a thing does not mean Diablo 4 isn't coming. It has to be coming, it's pretty much expected at this point. If this was Blizzard's way of trying to hold fans over until Diablo for, this was just the wrong way to go about it. It's all just some more salt in the wound of the already salty salty boys that make up Diablo's audience. Again, myself included. Take that, Satan! Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry I kinda disappeared there for about a month. I just kinda needed a little break, I guess. If you wanna see some more stuff about bad mobile games, I do have something in the works, so subscribe and stay tuned for that. And you can watch my previous video by clicking on it here. And if you have any thoughts about this whole mobile game discussion, definitely feel free to let me know in the comments. It would be nice. I'm a, I'm a soft boy.